Are you guys ready? Give it up for Joseph McClendon! Thank you so much. Wait a minute, don't sit down yet. Good Lord. First off, please give this man an unbelievable hand. Thank you. And some of them are my new friends, people that I've met since I got here today. Give everybody on the staff and the crew, everybody an unbelievable hand and support everybody that's back there as well. Give my hand. Give my hand, yeah. All right, now go ahead, sit down, sit down. First off, you So, guys, Joseph. Yes, yes. So, you do have somebody you want them all to meet before we end tonight. Yes, you, you need to shut up. Okay, I'm yes. sorry. I, I know actually, you, you told me. I have a, but a, you a, know a, how I am. Yeah, I yes. can keep a secret, seriously. Yeah, for, yeah, uh, for yeah. about an hour. Uh, and I actually thought about not telling him about it, but uh, he's got a big mouth. So, so, towards the end here, please stay here because I have a very, very special gift or uh, friend, uh, uh, guest for you to meet um, towards the end here that you are absolutely going to fall in love with, I promise you. Are you up for it? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't want to hear any whining, okay? All right. They want us to get closer together. Yes, let's get closer. <laughs> uh, yeah. it's, it's been a while. I feel you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> And you are from Southern California. Yes, I am. Yes, yes. Yeah. Any, any other Californians out there? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. step outside of this hot thing and you'll realize that California is the place to be. But anyway, thank exactly. you for having me here. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Joseph does not like to have fun, so we got to get very yeah, serious. Yeah. We, we introduced them to the top professor in the world, the educational professor that really teaches a lot of curriculum today, and um, voodoo economics is <laughs> yes, what he teaches. Yes, yeah. So they want seriousness. Okay, all right. They don't want to be playful. Am I right? Yes or no? <laughs> but if no. you're not serious, you will not be successful. <laughs> Look at the looks on their faces. It's like, yeah, get him out of here. So um, number one is I've known Joseph for, I don't know, going on several years, five, yeah, four or five, five years sure. now, and, um, you know, definitely feel blessed and privileged that uh, not only is he up here as someone that wants to give you guys a gift, and I know that he loves giving, um, but feel very blessed and humbled that he sees what we see. I mean, he really, I think that, you know, sees what we see, believes in what we believe in, in terms of what we're doing within Ripplin. But um, before he kind of talks a little bit about what I think he came to talk about, is I'd love for them to just kind of get to know a little bit about you. I know that I said that you taught at University, UCLA, mm -hmm. is... Um, you know, kind of share with everyone what you taught on, because I think it's pretty amazing just some of the curriculum and some of the experiences that you've had. Well, my first uh, set of courses that I taught there, it was, how many, by the way, anytime you say 19 anything, doesn't it sound ancient these days? It was days? 1963, <laughs> 1963. when you taught there, is that right? No, I think I started there in 96, okay. 1996, and I was hired in there to teach to the engineering and management department of the college. And there was about 20% undergraduates, meaning young students that came in, but the rest of it were engineers from places like Jet Propulsion Laboratory and, and NASA and things like that. Any engineers in the audience? Okay, so you guys know how you are. <laughs> and I say you that make to French say, yes, yes, I know, it's what I do. I say this, but they know that. They're very analytical, and if you want to put technical, anal people, and I mean that lovingly, okay? And, and they're brilliant, and, and all of them, yes, all of them in my classes were smarter than me. And they knew things that I, they were, it was literally, they were rocket scientists. You hear, oh, you hear that saying about, you know, this isn't rocket science? Well, these guys are rocket scientists. And what they brought me in was to teach leadership and something that I, I called the course, re-engineering yourself for the next century. And what that means is, you know, I always use this term, you know, we, we hear it all over the place, personal development. And when you ask 100 people what it means, you're going to get 100 different answers. But personal development means... That's like motivational type it's shit. Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. But personal development is just rehearsing who you want to become. When you, when you arrive in the future, 
successful, wealthy, healthy, happy, and all those things, you're going to be different than you are right now. So the trick is, is to see what that is, figure out what it is, and then start doing it now so that you become that. And the engineers, because of their nature, were not always receptive, shall I put it. <laughs> so I had to learn how to get into their world, enter their world, so to help them change into an area that they right. want. So I had a lot of fun doing it. My course became number one uh, in that department the very first year, and I taught it for another six years and then said, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And, um, you know, one of the things that, that I know you're passionate about and something that I've talked to you guys about just coming up uh, through childhood, I was always involved with athletics. And so the value of coaching, I always understood is, you know, because I would believe that I am where I'm at today because of the coaches that I've had in my life, because they really set that foundation, even from a mindset perspective, but they also give you the ability to push you. And yes. I believe there's a huge difference in being a coach and a mentor. Yes. And, um, but, you know, I think that you've been coaching now for 20 years and coaching individuals in different aspects of their lives, uh, from actors to business individuals to politicians to heads of foreign countries, but kind of share with everybody what you believe the value of coaching is, and more importantly, I think ongoing coaching and yeah. ongoing learning. First of all, um, you gave such a perfect example of it. Just a few minutes ago when you were saying, you went to the multimillionaire, he coached you. And it's, it's really important. I'll tell you just real quickly the value of coaching and kind of to dovetail on what you were just saying here. I have a seven-year-old son. He's six and a half years old. And when he was four years old, I sat him down in front of a, uh, on YouTube and I played a boxing match. And the boxing match, I, I watched it before and I showed it to him and I said, I want you to watch this. Because he asked me, he said, Papa, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a coach, I'm a mentor. And he goes, what is that? And so I played the, the boxing match, and it went for three minutes, however long they boxed. The bell rang, and they went and sat down. And then I played it all the way up until the bell got ready to ring again. And I said, what did you notice? And he goes, well, they got out there, and they, they punched each other. And then the bell rang, and they went, and they, got, they sat down. And I go, well, what else did you notice? And he goes, that one guy kept telling the other guy what to do. And I go, yeah, that's the coach. And he goes, is that what you do? And I go, well, yeah. And then he says, and I said, okay, but there's one other thing I want you to see. And, he, and he, so I played it again. So I played the next one. The bell rang. They got up. They boxed. They fought. And the bell rang again. They went and they sat back down. Same thing happened. I played it up until just before the bell rang again. Started it again. And I said, what did you notice this time? And he goes, my son, if you might imagine, is a little bit of a smart aleck. He goes, I got it, dude. He goes, the boxer didn't say anything. And I said, yeah. And I said, it's a two-way street. You can't coach somebody that doesn't listen. And this is just what you were just saying there. So you're what did you just say? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the value of coaching is I'm where I am and I give 99% of, I say 90% because I did my, my share, but 99% of my own success is anything that I do, that I've had some unbelievable coaches and mentors in my life as well. And it's not just hearing something once because you're the type of person that I know you just didn't listen to that and go, okay, well, that was good knowledge. Because knowledge is great. It's all over the place. But ongoing coaching is what, you, it, what happens after you learn the first lesson. In other words, in a few minutes, I'm going to teach you guys some, something, uh, some things. And then we're going to give you the opportunity to do something beyond here. You didn't learn how to read just by, by learning your alphabet. You went to school and you kept on going, you kept on going. You, you kept on having somebody in your life that was at a different level of understanding to guide you, to hold you to a higher standard, and so on and so forth. And without that, it's slow learning. You're going to learn, but it's slow. And it's mm -hmm. about compressing time frames, especially exactly. today's market, mm -hmm. because today's market is obviously this whole weekend we've been talking about is moving faster than ever. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I think that I, the term is cognitive blindness, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Is and it's also about being able to see sometimes what other people just can't see, and what you don't know, oh, you wait, don't wait. know. Can you find? I, we didn't tell you this, Sam, and I'm so sorry. If you can on YouTube, do they have the ability to play YouTube up here? No, Jen has it, I think. Well, you already have it. Jen, you already have it? We, uh, the, the video? Uh, the nail? You have it? Okay. Yeah. If you guys have not seen this, you're, it's going to kill you, okay? But, but it is. He's, he called it cognitive blindness. Everybody has one. Can we play this first? Sure, and then, yes, And then absolutely. we'll go further about it. Please watch this. If you've not seen it, see it again for the first <laughs> It's just, 
there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless and I don't know if it's gonna stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever gonna stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop they... trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing- You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. See, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, out. you're not even listening now. Okay, fine, I will listen, fine. It's just, sometimes it's like, there's this achy, I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. That sounds really hard. It is. Thank you. Ow! Come on, if you would just- Don't! <laughs> Try to see things my way. Well, I have to keep on talking till I can. <laughs> no, you guys, you guys were laughing. <laughs> you guys were laughing and you didn't hear her say, all of my sweaters are snagged. <laughs> <laughs> so what he's talking about is that's cognitive blindness. Now all the guys in the audience are saying, that's my wife, that's my girlfriend, okay? And all the women are saying, that's my husband, okay? But here's my point, is we all have a nail, every single one of us. And I'm going to show you some of that as we get going here. And that cognitive blindness is, yeah, not you, <laughs> every, all of them, okay? Oh, okay? And we all have that. And unless we do something about it, you, you, you're stuck in that place, and it's just going to be that over and over again. And I have a question for everybody, and you, 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 you said it so perfectly, in this day and age, we're all about instant gratification, doing it as quickly as possible. And I have a term I call further faster. And what that means is, do you want what you want, whether it's money, health, wealth, happiness, all that stuff, do you want what you want sooner rather than later? And the answer is yes. sooner, especially in this group of people. So name of the game is that's what we're all about. I'm excited about that. Fabulous. Um, I'm still thinking about the nail thing. <laughs> I can't get it All my sweaters are snagged. Oh, you're not listening to me. No, but, um, you know, one of the things, we were talking upstairs, I don't know, a couple hours ago, and we were just kind of talking about what's taking place in, in not only business, but the world and kind of some of the goals that we have to transcend the marketplace and, you know, to use blue ocean strategies, not to try to, you know, go where all the red water is, where all the competition is, but to innovate to where the competition is irrelevant. And, you know, it's funny because we got to a place where we we're talking about where people are at around the world and really the masses and the experience or the association that people have and one of the things that I always talk about is that, you know, 10 years ago is when I started in, or 20 years ago when I started in this world of network marketing, is if I ask 10 people in a room, you know, who's ever participated, been touched by direct sales or network marketing, you'd have three out of 10 people in the room raise their hand. But today, watch this, how many people in the room have ever participated as a distributor or been a customer of a direct marketing company? If you have, raise your hand and say aye. aye. Prior to this. Aye. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're going, now. There's that nail. Yeah. Uh, so the reality of it is, though, is everyone here has a different perception based on, or a different stigma based on probably the association they gave with their, their experience. Yeah. So for instance, how many people have had a great experience and they love the industry? Say yes. yes. How many people have said, I'll never do that shit again? <laughs> Raise your hand. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> and so, you know, I know that we talked a little bit about um, how we can make it different. You know, and kind of give us some insight on, because I know that you've had some experience mm -hmm. within uh, you know, the industry of home-based business, internet marketing, direct sales, network marketing. I mean, 
you know, you have not only coached a lot of leaders throughout that process over the last 20 years, but I know that you've participated, but what kind of share with them what you were sharing with me in, in terms of what you believe really needs to be in place to truly make it different? I think it's three things. And, and first off, I did network marketing to prove three things, actually four things. But I, like most people, how many of you, and I'll be honest, had a bad experience, meaning you started it and didn't get make those millions that, or whatever was promised to you in the very beginning? Okay, okay, and, and that's pretty much everybody. It's across the board. So it, the, the, the term network marketing or direct marketing and so, and so on and so forth, MLM doesn't leave such a great taste in people's mouths, agreed? For most people. And so... And some of the promises that I had heard and, and in my position and what I do is I get, I get called upon to speak to or, or audiences all over the place. And a great deal of them more and more through time started to be to network marketing companies. And because that industry does realize the value of ongoing coaching and mentoring in that more than anybody, because it's people dealing with people, not an industry dealing with, with people, it's people interacting. So I would go and I'd talk to these people and I caught myself not feeling comfortable because I was preaching something that I hadn't done. And I hate teaching theory, I don't believe in it. And so I said to myself that I'm going to do it so that I'd know what I was talking about. What a concept, huh? <laughs> so that I wasn't teaching you something that I didn't know. So I, I joined a network marketing company. The name of it's not, it's not important right now. And so, that's, so I wanted to see what it was like. And I, was lit and I didn't use my influence. I told you this. I didn't go in front of the audiences of people that I'm in front now and say, hey, join my organization. I was literally that person back in the day that was putting flyers on cars and making the phone calls and doing all of those things that, were, that everybody else would have to do in that model. <clears throat> And in that company I became, I, I rose to the highest level of their marketing plan in 22 months, which in that company is a seven to 10 year trek. And I did it by employing some of the things I'm gonna teach you now and some of the things that you're gonna learn with the, something we're gonna share with you as well. And that was the first reason. The second reason was I wanted to have and create a residual income because I love what I do, but if I stopped working, my paycheck stopped. I have some books and some, some programs and things, but I didn't have residual income. So I wanted to do that. And then the third thing was I wanted to prove that it was true that, you, that people, you could do this type of business for X amount of time and then stop doing it and the money still keeps coming in. Let me repeat myself, and the money still keeps coming in. <laughs> and so I did that, yes, yes, thank you very much. And so I did that and, and in the very short amount of years that I was doing it, just I think it was just under eight years, I was doing it very, very part-time by the way, extremely part-time, maybe five hours a week. My company did, as you said before, over $25 million in business, and they still pay me money. I retired from it, and they still pay me freaking money every single month. <laughs> so I share that with you not to brag or to boast, but to let you know that, yes, it does work. Now, having said that, the reality is, is here we are now in a different day and age, whereas in dealing with the fact that most people have had maybe not such an, uh, a, a favorable experience doing network marketing, how, how do we approach them? And as Jim was saying earlier when, when he was up here and I spoke to him, well, we've taken the best part of network marketing and the best part of technology and, and the best part of everything and put it together. And that's what you have here. I, I got to tell them, and I'm so excited. And by the way, if you have not, raise your hand if you've, if you've uh, opted in to Unleash at 90210. If you haven't, do it now, because I'm so <laughs> freaking excited about this. It's unbelievable. When I came here, first off, Brian approached me a couple months ago, and he said, in a week, I need a product. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> And so I've been, I've been working on that. And he, he, he told me about what this is all about. And I said, okay, that sounds great. But he hit my soft spot. And that is because I'm about helping people. At my, at my stage in my career and everything, I'm, I'm about helping people. You know, somebody helped me when I was homeless and what changed, that's what changed my life. And now it's my turn to give back. So I jumped on and I've been doing that. And quite honestly, I didn't quite understand what this really was and how awesome this really was till I came here today. Seriously, and Jim got me in the back and in the back of the room and told me a bit about it. And then we went up to the room, and these guys slapped me around like I stole something from church. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That game—we only played the game for maybe 
30 seconds and I'm addicted to it. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you guys have no idea. And, I, and, and by the way, I've had the privilege of speaking to and experiencing probably 80% of all the network marketing companies that are out there and all the programs and all the things. And people are consistently, every week, somebody comes up with, to me with another opportunity. And I've looked at everything and I've never seen anything like this in my life. And I'm so excited. <laughs> Seriously, guys. Because... It's got all of the elements and all that we're going to bring to you to be able to, and, and you were talking about marketing and so on and so forth. It cannot be easier. Watch this. I got two watches on, actually. <laughs> Watch this. This is like the coolest thing in the world. Do I have to hold it till, it's, till it, we may have run out of battery. I know you've got to wait. Send a text. To whom shall I send it? I need a contact name, phone number, or email address. 90210. <laughs> what do you want to say to? 0210. You freaking rock. I updated your message. It says, you freaking rock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, send the text. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> that's just the tip of the, that's just the tip. That's the tip of the ice freaking berg. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I am, look, how many of you, yeah, you've heard this before, so I got to do my piece of it. How many of you do social networking right now? Okay. How many of your friends do social networking right now? Okay. How easy is it to go on Facebook or to go somewhere and spread a message just by giving them a message or a text message? Hello. And if you haven't seen the video, I know they talked about it, but I'm so excited. I just, it's like it's brand new to me. The video text mess, it's, it's going to replace texting as far as I'm concerned. I was just, when they were slapping me around, they showed me all about this. And it was just like, I didn't know this. And they're looking at me like, duh. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say this, but I'm going to say it. We're going to get freaking rich. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Go home. Okay. <laughs> See you. Good night. <laughs> so, wait a minute. Stay standing. Stay standing. Okay. Oh, go ahead and sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Wow. <laughs> Is this exciting or what? <laughs> You're getting me in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Jennifer Grace is back there going. <laughs> <laughs> Reel him in. So you're excited? Yes. He really is excited. That wasn't just like performance. Like he literally jumped up out of the chair, started doing some type of dance like this. I don't know it wasn't what he was pretty. doing. It wasn't pretty. Um, because, but I mean, the reason you are is because you love innovation. Yes. And yes. you love technology. I mean, we've talked about from cars through the years to Everything. mobile engagement. Yeah, I, I, just, I mean, that's, I love, that's one of the yeah, reasons uh, we met is mm -hmm. because of mobile engagement. Yes. Uh -huh and what that could do to drive audiences. But, um, you know, kind of talk about your thoughts on, you know, transformational learning, because that is technology. Learning is technology. Yeah. And then also some of the technology platforms that gives us the ability that we're seeing out there more and more. But your thoughts on, um, you know, where that space is right now and why you're so excited about it. Right now, I believe that it's, it's in its infancy. It truly is. And I, I love the term transformational learning. First up, let me, let me, add to what you were asking before you asked about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And you said that knowledge is information and wisdom is when you didn't do what was supposed. And I have a, a little bit different. It does, it does pertain to that. But um, I look at it as knowledge is just stored information. All of us have smartphones and the infinite wisdom of everything is out there. They, they estimate that 80 to 85% of all of the knowledge of all mankind since the dawn of time is somewhere on the internet. 
right now. If you wanted to find out what the consistency of rat vomit is, <coughs> you can go online and you can find it somewhere. You just Google it and it'll come up. Seriously. Where did so, you get that? You I have something with just, rats. I mean, in the back, you said you're so hungry you could bite a rat's nose off. Yes. Well, I don't know. It scares me. I got to do some personal work. Um, <laughs> But my point is this, is technology, it's out there, it's everywhere, but that's just knowledge. And you don't even have to store it up here anymore, it's on your cell phone, right? That's, but knowledge on its, on its own is useless unless it's applied. Wisdom is applied knowledge. You have wisdom about driving a car, you have wisdom about doing whatever it is that you're really, you're, you're good at. And so, the, so transformational learning, in my opinion, is the rapid learning and application of knowledge to the point that it becomes wisdom. We all know this, that repetition is the mother of all skill, right? Okay, that's transformational learning old school. And what we've done, I'm a psychologist, and my background is neuropsychology. And so what we've learned is that just as technology has advanced leaps and bounds more in the last 10 years than has been in the last 500 years, so has the technology in how we function as human beings, how we input it as human beings, and how we, how we actually do what we've learned and a way to do, make it go faster. And that's what I do. And that's, I mean, and that's really kind of been your life mission. I mean, yes. you went to school, you got your doctorate in neuro psychology. Psychology. I'm from Kentucky. I know, so that's it's, why I finished it's a, it it's for a you. long word. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I appreciate I know. that. <laughs> and um, <laughs> but where where do you see? You know, we talked about the speed and, and the compressing of time frames, but the rate at which people can learn today is what you're saying is faster than ever before. And if we mm -hmm. don't do it and we don't commit to it, then we're going to be left behind. Yeah, and the, the, the trick is, is to recognize where you are, which is what I'm going to help you to, uh, to do, help you recognize where you are, where you want to go, and how to get there quickly. And, and to turn on that switch so that we are, as you said, a part of the, it's going to be the masses, it truly is, that move quickly versus the rest of the people that are still going, okay, what is this and, and, and how do I do this? There's a way, I'll give you a real quick example, and a little bit unrelated but related. People, for many, many years, I had a practice in Los Angeles, and my practice was helping people get over fears and phobias and emotional challenges in a very short amount of time. And I could do it, what would take normally, used to take years and years, takes me 45 minutes. If you came into my office and you had a fear of dogs, guess what was gonna be in my office? Not just a dog, but one that's foaming at the mouth because I put <laughs> peanut butter on it, sure. <laughs> and so the technology allowed me to enter your world, interrupt your pattern, and replace it with something that is gonna serve you better. And so I made a career of doing that for many, many years. And some of you know I've been working with Anthony Robbins for many, many years, and, and I did all of those for that organization for many years. And what I recognize is, is and that's, by the way, when I started teaching at, at UCLA, the way to get into those people as well. But my point is, is that there's a much quicker, easier, faster, simpler way of getting into your psychology and shifting your psychology than the school of hard knocks. And so my opinion is, it's in its infancy in terms of of people knowing and using it. And that's what we're here for, and that's what you're here for, because my saying is, I, I just love this, it's how I, what I believe, and I hope you take this on a better, uh, uh, as well. A better me makes a better us, and together we make a better world. And, mm -hmm. Yes. Can you say that again? Yes. One more time. A better me makes a better us, and together we'll make a better world. And for you, a better you makes a better team. And together we're all going to make a difference because I'm going to show it here in a minute. But my saying is those of us that dare to dream while the rest of the world is having a nightmare, and they really are, we're not only going to inherit the prosperity that we, we want and we desire, but we're also going to be the leaders to help other people go there as well. And yeah, and that's, that's what we're here for. That's what you're here for. So my outcome for you is to help you get everything that you want. And you know, this, I, I can, and, and I, I mean this from my, the bottom of my heart. I'm out there, I'm out in the world. In three days, I leave for an Asian tour. I'm all over the world. I will have been around the world three times by the end of this year. I've been everywhere and I get approached with everything. I get, and I see everything. I love technology and I've never, ever, ever seen anything like this. I was excited before I showed up here today and now I'm over the top. So you know. So, 
What would you say that, that um, what excites you so much? I mean, I know technology is great, but I know that we also talk about the underlying mission of, you know, really like-minded people and what we're doing. But what excites you so much about what you see Ripplin is and what Ripplin, you know, is going to be? I, I think probably the biggest thing is it takes away stigma and it takes away probably, see, the number one fear of human beings is fear of rejection. It truly is. It's just all over the place. It's just across. It's, it's in, it's, I was going to say inbred. <laughs> is it because I'm from Kentucky? Kentucky. <laughs> 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 He's so it. quick, yes. I mean, they're on it right now, aren't they? Yes. It, it, you, you got them in shape before yes, you came on here. It's, it's part of our DNA. We're supposed to be that way, but it shouldn't paralyze you. It should be just a warning to, to, to look up and say, where is the best place for me to go? And so what excites me is that everybody here and everybody that you touch has the ability to, to do something and impact other people in a quicker way without having to go through all that other stuff, you know, without having to go through all of the fears and stuff. However, I will say this, that where you are right now, and, and, I, and I, in this room right now, you're the elite, meaning you're the people that are here early, and you're the people that are, that are on the ball, and you already get the mission and the vision and so on and so forth. And I'm going to say this, no matter what you do in your life, as Brian said, I have the privilege of coaching and mentoring movie stars, actors, actresses, sports figures, you name it, even some royalty. And the one thing that everybody wants, and you want it too, is to be more effective. Yes? Yeah at what you do, because, and I'm gonna show you some things here in a minute, I keep saying that, but we're going to, but we're having so much fun here, you know, um, is that's the name of the game. So when it comes down to it, no matter what you do in your personal life and in your business life, life effectiveness is the most important key, the most important tool that you have, which as it pertains to making happen what you want and going further And keeping faster. up. And keeping up. And, and, and because it, if you're not effective today, you're not gonna keep up, and that's yeah. really, what we talked about when I called him, and for some of you that know me, I really did call him and say, hey, Joseph, here's what we're doing, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, sounds great, Brian, sounds great. Hey, go watch the video. I called him back. Hey, Joseph, need a product. Seriously, five days. Five days. Okay, we can do it. We can do it in 10. We can do it in 10. This is right after the April <laughs> event, right? And, um, but one of the things that we talked about was what would be a good baseline product that people literally could bring value and a foundational value to people all around the world because w one of the things that everyone should be aware of is that this is a global platform and for some of you you know you have to actually see where this can impact people not only ourselves but all around the world that could create this foundation of the stacked transformational learning that we want to create yes mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and where we're going to start is with this program. It's called the E-Factor, Effectiveness Factor. And it, it is that. It's transformational learning. And learning is one thing, but transformational doing and, and the way I design things, just as we're going to do here in a little bit, is I don't want you to just learn something. We're going to do something so you get a result. And that's where it happens. That's where your life changes. It's not just knowing something. Life doesn't change then. It's just, you know, you got more wisdom, so or more, more knowledge. But when you do something and you take action and then turn that into activity, that's when things happen. Well, I mean, th these are action takers. I think, I, I mean, I are you guys ready to do? Yeah. Yes or no? Absolutely. Oh, come on. Are you ready to do? Yes or no? I mean, I think they're ready to do. Yeah, well, absolutely. And, and we got so much more as well. I, I, I got I to gotta tell you this. I got to make sure I get his name right. But I met somebody in the hallway that we're going to bring to you guys as well. This guy floored me. He taught me. Well, he's, he's, he's right back yeah, there with Russell. He came in to see Russell. He came in to see Russell. His name is Howard Steffenberg. And Howard... Do we, he, Yes, Do you mind saying right a couple yeah. words? Yeah. No, 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 just oh, okay. because we're, we're going to move. But, but Howard showed me how to remember something. And I, as I, I have, I'm not going to say the worst memory in the world, but I got a lot of stuff going on here. I mean, I'm brilliant, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of stuff going on here. And in, in literally three minutes, he showed me a tool. And that's what I respect about people that have tools. And that's what we're going to bring to you as well with this platform, this transformational learning platform is... is People like him that are going to show you things that you can do to change your life. Are you up for it? Yeah. Uh, and, and before we get started, on behalf of everyone, we just appreciate you being here and being willing to give. 
And I know that you did crank that out in 10 days. And then we had to, <laughs> then we had to go literally develop it. And I know you're like, well, why did I have to do it in 10 days? It took you two months to get it out. Unreal. And um, some of the things he's going to be sharing with you, uh, this is going to go live Monday at, I think it's noon on Monday, Central yeah. Standard Time. This product will be available for you to to share with all the fans within your Ripple. But I do want to tell you from the bottom of my heart how much I appreciate you and your time and energy and everything that you're contributing to what we're doing and also playing with us. So My pleasure. Um, you know, and you ain't great. seen nothing yet. That's right. And it's only this <laughs> yeah. begun.